Hello. So this section um, will have it have a look at the at, at imposing motions onto joints. Uh, just as a as a brief recap of where we are at this stage. Um, initially, we just created geometry. Uh, second, we started creating assemblies. Then we saw how we can take those assemblies into the motion uh, application in NX. Um, then we started looking at uh, how to create uh, links on uh, well uh, manually. Then we started. We had a look at creating some uh, some joints as well. And now we had a section. Well, oh, we, sorry, we also had a look at over constraining models. And now we had a point um, where we can start driving the models uh, with with certain functions. So if you look at this two bar linkage, uh, just to give you some background as well, there's a revolute joint connected to ground, and there is a revolute joint that connects these two links to each other. If I open up this. Uh, the motion navigator we can see that the Grubler count in, in this case is 2 uh, this means that there are two open degrees of freedom and that is clearly seen when I play the simulation you can see that both of these joints move of their own accord uh, according to the load which in this case is just a gravity so I can return to model and now we can say okay well let's let's drive this bottom revolute joint at a certain speed okay so what we can do is we can go to the home tab and we can there's two different ways that we can do it we can either do it in the joint itself or we've got this driver up here in the joint itself will be a right click edit or double click and this will open up the joint dialog in the driver section you can see uh, it already knows that it's uh, only a rotation possible for in order to drive this link so now we've got uh, m multiple options uh, we can add a polynomial um, if we have this if we add a velocity here that means that this link will move at a constant velocity uh, through the time specified during the simulation uh, let's say I want to um, ramp up this motion from a certain uh, so let's say I want to ramp it up from zero degrees per second up to 90 degrees per second and I want to do that in five seconds so in motion we've got a function called so let's first go to function and we can say I don't want displacement I want a velocity and now we can go into a function manager and function manager allows us to create a step function so you can see I've already created one but I'm going to create a new step function what's important to see here we can we've got some math functions as well uh, you can use all of these but we're going to use the step function from our motion functions so at the bottom we've got the step function I'm just going to double click it and it inserts it it's important now that you have to manually fill in these values so in X this is your independent variable okay our independent variable will be time you can also type time uh, it's it is th this variable is created by NX so here in this first one we've got x0 x0 means our first x value so we, but we this is our first time value so we're going to start ramping up this um, angular velocity from zero time okay our first function value is how many degrees per second I'm going to say zero degrees per second when should this have been done uh, when is the final time and I'm going to say four seconds and our final function value is 90 so that will move at 90 degrees per second I know it's 90 degrees per second because our unit is set down here so I can say okay to that I can you can see it's highlighted so then it's selected I can say okay and again now we're back in the joint dialog box I can say okay again and there you can see uh, th this motion is added What's important to notice now as well, our Grubler count went down from 2 to 1 because we imposed the motion. We took away one degree of freedom. So our other degree of freedom is there. So if I run this simulation now, I'll just check if, it is, uh, if the time is correct. So we can say 5 seconds. So there we can see it will run um, past the, the, the maximum point for our step function. So I think this is 
fine and we can say okay I'm going to right click there and say solve okay so now we can see that it's solved and can look up here we can see there's no redundant constraints I can say finish and now we can play this result so as you can see that step function is starting to accelerate and there we reach four seconds so that's 90 degrees per second maybe we can just solve this a bit longer just to get a good feel for what is happening so I'm gonna say 10 seconds and a thousand points and just solve that again and if we look at the results again up here we can also set the speed so let's say every third point so you can see there it's just the constant velocity from four, four seconds to ten seconds is just a constant velocity um, of 90 degrees per second and that is the first way to s impose a motion on this model so we can also impose a motion there if we'd like in this case I'm not going to do that but it's important to know that you can see uh, the difference between these two icons is we can see that this one has got a, these uh, red arrows in it which means that it is driven so if I just uh, and this now we can start getting into maybe a little bit of plotting so I, uh, if I click there and it's important that I highlight that joint and I go down here to XY result view there's multiple options that we can plot this is this is uh, the results obtained from the simulation we can see joint driver rotation and we can say see uh, we can ask for the velocity and the angle and I can say so I right click angle I say plot uh, here I've got an option to either select this viewport in order to plot in or I find it uh, the simplest to just create a new window uh, each time so there we can see from zero to four seconds we reach our um, our max so we can we can just probe this we can see zero and then four seconds we reach 90 um, and as you can see in the background you can see that the model is moving as I'm probing through it so I can exactly see at which position uh, we get which value it is uh, something else that I should mention okay so let's just uh, it's important to know that if this is grayed out uh, it is main, it's sometimes the case that you are still in the results so just go to results and say return to model and if I go to the home tab everything is then open for me it's important that I just mention that this constraint section uh, if you add constraints to a model those constraints are also seen as joints so you can also drive those joints in the next section um, this will be the third presentation um, uh, in terms of the slides uh, there I do three examples, example problems, which uh, I look at. at I look at uh, 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 imposing motion on on constraints. This concludes this section on adding a motion to a joint.